Tally Ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and, uh, yeah, if you like these videos, and to follow me on my Instagram, which is at Jules Guides Official. And today we are in Tottenham. Um, this part is South Tottenham. We're just actually by Seven Sisters Station over here. The reason why it's called Seven Sisters is, um, well, I've got to go over here to tell you. You see, back in about 1350, there was the Seven Sisters, and they decided to plant seven elm trees around a walnut tree, which was somewhere around here. I don't know where it was exactly. But, uh, but those trees is, uh, survived till about 1833, and that's why they named Seven Sisters Road, that turnpike road over there, after these seven sisters who planted these trees. Anyway, that walnut tree died, and I don't know what happened to the trees, but uh, back in 1997, um, a, a new group of sisters came along and they decided to plant these seven ones here. I'm betting on number seven. Seven is lucky for me. I think it was this old Roman road to Lincoln. I think actually this is the one, I think eventually you get to Lincoln. It used to be kind of Ermine Street, this was called, back in Roman times. But anyway, that building on the corner there, that's Ward's Corner. Can you see it? That used to be an Edwardian furniture store. But now, I mean, more recently, there was like a hundred or so different Latin American stalls in there in a sort of little market. But of course, because of regeneration, it's closed and no doubt they'll turn it into some luxury flats or some massive retail outlet, presumably. Looks like they're clinging on for the time being. Just down West Green Road, there's loads of uh, different types of shops from different nationalities, but one of, the, one of the most important ones is down here, Uncle John's Bakery. Hey, Ronnie. Hi, how you how doing, Jules? How you doing? Welcome to Uncle John's Bakery. Excellent. Famous for sweet bread. Uncle John is famous for the original sweet bread. First, they brought their bread down from Ghana, and then they realised that people want the bread fresh. So they started baking it here, and here we are today, 25 years later. Were you the first people to do this? We were the first ones to do it in the country. We go from bread rolls to cakes, biscuit snacks, cater to parties. There's a lady behind you lurking yeah. with some excellent... Now, what have we got here? Look. We've got a plain cake and then some buff rolls. <laughs> Quite good, these, aren't they? Yeah. What makes it sweet, though? Why is it sweet? We have a secret recipe. 25 years, we've kept it a secret. Uncle John is your husband? Yes. I heard when he started out, it was really oh, tough right. and his van kept yeah. getting stolen. Sometimes even on delivery, he will go to a shop to live up. By the time he comes back, the van is gone. He Sometimes. wanted to give up. He was thinking of giving up. Yeah, it was too much. Oh, no. So what did you tell him? Obeyeye. Obeyeye. Yes. Obeyeye. He shouldn't worry and it will be OK. Uh, and it was OK. Yeah, it was yeah, OK. Yes. And you even served at 10 Downing Street at Black History Month. At the time of recording, England are about to play in the final tomorrow. We don't know what the result's going to be yet. Oh, we've got yeah. special donuts for the day. Oh, cool, with little yeah. St. George crosses yeah. on them. Chicken pies, fish pies, carrot cake, cinnamon cake, cocoa sponge. We have to give everything that homemade feel so it yeah. makes you feel at home. Yeah. Oh, we meant at home back in Ghana. May I be very ju juvenile and point out the Shito Ghana? The Shito <laughs> Ghanaian <laughs> pepper sauce is a very special Ghanaian sauce. Really? It's a bit of a peculiar name. We like to have it a lot with um, when we have our plantain or our jollof. You can have mild, really hot, but if you can handle the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Shito just literally means pepper sauce. In Ghanaian? Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah, <laughs> cheers. Okay, thank you. It's lovely to meet you all. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> See you guys. Look at this. Come on, here you go. Oh, there you are. I'm worried someone's going to tread on him. <laughs> I always do. Oh, no. Thank <laughs> you. This little entrance here, is, it's this little gate, is the only part of the old brewery that used to exist here in the 19th century. It was called the Austro-Bavarian Lager Beer and Crystal Ice Company. The first dedicated lager brewery in the whole of the UK. They only made lager rather than pale ale or whatever. 
But back in 1881, it was entirely staffed by uh, German immigrants and their families. But then I think there was some sort of report that the lager was tasting a bit too much like curry, apparently. And they changed it to the Tottenham Lager Brewery. And uh, yeah, Tottenham Lager was, was sold for quite, quite some years. I don't know if you can still get it, Tottenham Lager. Up until about the 1870s, this was mostly upper middle class, wealthier people who were living around here um, because of its access to London. And then over that side was mostly woodland, and then that side was all, I don't know, marshland to do with the Lee River. And then when they built that railway around the 1870s, that's what brought a lot of more workers to the area. I should point out Chuku's Nigerian tapas over there, a very highly recommended restaurant. I shan't be going in today. But, uh, yeah, that's a good place, that. And a lot of good right trucks. Bloody weather. <laughs> this is Tottenham Green. This is where the little village of Tottenham first really started up. This is a, the, the, the houses were mostly based around here. Between 1500 and 1700, things like almshouses and uh, charitable institutions started popping up around here. I mean, look, that's the old town hall there. Come along here, Simon. I shall cut to a nice sunny picture of the town hall, which I took the other day. So in 1965, the boroughs of Hornsey and Tottenham got merged with one other, I think, and uh, became the London borough of Haringey. So it stopped being like the seat of local government then. But look, that's the old uh, fire station there. And just over here, that's a memorial for Cynthia Jarrett, whose death sort of sparked the Broadwater oh, Farm riot, you. about which more later. You see, now, I don't know, I think that might be part of the old brewery that we just saw, the ice house. But these days, I think it's just carrying some cables or some air conditioning or something. But I like it when you've still got these remnants of yeah. these old buildings around here. It's a beautiful, beautiful set of buildings along here. These days, it's all like an art centre and uh, first, London's first free college down there. Look at this excellent well. This was sunk in 1791 because there used to be 3,000 inhabitants here in Tottenham. And they dug this well, which was paid for by Thomas Smith, who was the lord of the manor up at uh, Bruce Castle, where we'll go later on. But they had to redo it around. So this one's from like the late 19th century. Originally, they used to use like the old sort of bucket on the end of a rope. Then later on, they started developing these pumps. Here's the axle where you put the handle into it. So. You put your handle through there, you reckon? Yeah. I wind that. <laughs> your water would come out there rather good, didn't it? I think one of the oldest pubs in Tottenham was the Tottenham Swan, which is where Domino's is now. It's a pity they closed it down. It was uh, quite a well-known pub. All the buses, when I was young, the destination was Tottenham Swan. When I was young, I didn't know what Tottenham Swan meant, but now I realise it was actually referring to the Swan pub because, look, there's the bus depot, yeah. built in 1913. They used to have one of the longest bus routes in London. It was, uh, was it the number 171? It went from Bruce Grove all the way to West Norwood. It would have made a perfect night bus. Do you remember the time when you used to take the night bus home? It was just like, you'd be, you could be anywhere in London. You just think, oh, go to the night bus. And it would say something like Tottenham Swan. And they go, oh, that's so roughly near where I live. And you sort of fall asleep by the back, it goes all around the houses. Yeah, and you, really crowded as well. Yeah. They were good fun. I used to enjoy getting the night bus home more than actually the, the nightclub I'd been to. These are rather nice. They've got some beautiful houses along Phillip Lane. I really like it along here. Look at these Forster's Cottages, for example. These were almshouses. Alm, alms, almshouses for widows over the age of 50. Josiah Forster, that must be his initials there, J and R.F. That must be Josiah Forster, 1860. He was a Quaker. He was a member of the Society for the Abolition of the Slave Trade, um, and uh, most of whom were Quakers. I think it was a Quaker organisation. Beautiful place. Imagine living in there. Terrific. It's all along here. They, I mean, I don't know if these were workers' cottages, but there were a lot of workers uh, in this area. And you see there, for example, that like, plaque on the wall, that's got a little coat of arms there, and it says, 
the label Vincit Omnia, which means work conquers all. So I suppose it's probably a reference to the people who worked around here. But what I like is these uh, little details on top of the houses. Like this one's got, he's got like a dragon on top of that one. I don't know what that, that's not really a dragon. That's some sort of little spirit of some sort. It looks like this dragon has fire breathed all over the house and burned the house down. <laughs> but um, excellent supermarket, that one over there. Supermarkets around here are really good. The amount of honey that they've got in there is quite remarkable. Turkish place. You've seen in there, Simon, yeah. the amount of honey they've got. Simon's from Tottenham. Simon, you're from Soto, South Tottenham. And the bread they do is extraordinary. Yeah. Are you the one that does the sourdough and stuff? Sourdough, oh, vegan, yeah. Oh, because I buy that one. Yeah, was everybody really... eating, they fall in love. Special colour. Yeah. Special tastiness. Yeah. Brazil colour, Brazil. Yeah. Are you Brazilian? No, I'm oh. Turkish. All right. Oh. Teşekkürler. Oh. Seven sisters, seven is lucky. Look, over here is the, um, the Tottenham High Cross. This, is, um, this replaced the, the Wayside Cross, which was there in 1409. I think this was more from the 1600s, this nice grand cross. The original wooden one was built in order to warn people of, I don't know, possible impending dangers or something like that, to tell pilgrims, you know, oh, watch out when you go past there, you might get mugged or something. One such dangerous thing that took place here in 1651, according to the History of Antiques of Tottenham in the County of Middlesex and other miscellaneous matter, being the 8th of November, John Nellum and John Winston, who, having some grudge or quarrel, taking his pick staff in their hands, met in the field where the two of them fought till John Nellum received a wound in his throat, fell down dead and never spake word after. One fine day in the middle of the night, two dead men got up to fight. Back to back they faced each other, drew their swords and shot each other. I don't like the rhyme of each other with each other. That's a terrible rhyme. This is a lovely little pub used to be a public toilet. How about that? I mean, where's the cross? Well, yeah, it should have a cross on the top, shouldn't it, really? It's just a weather vane. There's no yeah, cross. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. It used to have a cross on it. Oh, but I yeah. think it's where the crossroads. It marks where there's a crossroads. Yeah. I don't know. Jules Guides is getting very vague these days, isn't he? I mean, you know, look over there. That used to be a school, that. And now it's like beautiful housing where your friend lives yeah, in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> See if you can see her waving from the window. <laughs> <laughs> Here on the corner of Chestnut Road and Tottenham High Road, just opposite that beautiful old theatre there, there used to be a rubber factory here on the corner. And back in 1909, a couple of Latvians called Paul Heefeld and Jacob Lepidus held up the van, which was carrying the wages of the people who worked in this rubber factory. Bit of a foolish place to do it, Brad, because it's right opposite the police station. There then ensued the most comic chase, which reminds me of something out of Benny Hill. It was actually very sad because there were four 400 shots fired and poor boy died who was 10 years old. Also, William Frederick Tyler was one of the policemen who died. While bravely serving the community in the Tottenham Outrage, it was called, these two guys, they, they held up a van, then they were chased by initially two policemen, then another guy started joining in. He was on a bicycle with a cutlass, chasing them down the road. Another high housewife was there, she threw a potato at them. They then commandeered a tram up on Chingford Road, and then gradually the whole community started chasing these guys all the way down. And eventually they got cornered in a building where they shot themselves. Well, one of them shot himself. She told me that that was a Guna pub, because they're like an Arsenal pub. I thought that can have meant that's where Arsenal fans can no, go and have a... No, they don't drink around here. No, they... <laughs> <laughs> More dodgy than the game. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, sir. There's something really cool down here, just opposite Bruce Grove, which is that road over there. We just go into this little, uh, I don't know what the name of the little passage is, but you can't miss it because it's covered in graffiti. VIP, very important paint. Hello, sir. Where is he? 
Madness in the house. Hey. You have come to the madness in the house. I am Billy, the proprietor of VIP, which is this great paint shop. This used to be a sports shop. August the 5th, 2011, you know the riots happened. This shop got vandalized and all the rest of it. The shop's been robbed and I am looking for a way out. I get up in the morning and I am happy. I had a dream that I, had, I was gonna sell paint. You just dreamt it? I just dreamt I'm gonna sell paint. I cater for the street art, the graffiti, anything to do with spray paints, murals. In the 70s, me and my brother, we found a shed in the bomb site of spray paint. We just used to go out and spray shutters. And eventually all the shopkeepers knew what we were up to. So whenever we appeared, they'd be all like this. Yeah, we know it's you lot. You ain't doing it no more. <laughs> Guess where we ended up? Where the tracks are, the oh, trains. Right. On the trains? Well, now it's like a place to do trackside. Yeah. You know, but we done that because that was the only place we can go to and no one sees us. And then they went onto the trains. So they could put a tag on, say, West London, and it will go to North London or to South London. And it was a way of them sending their style around London. And it was the only way to do it, it was on the trains. Yeah, Zabu, that's Zabu. What I like is when I don't know who the artist is, I said, would you write, mate? And all of a sudden they show you their Insta page. You go, wow, is that who you are, you know? So Prisonopoly. Prisonopoly. <laughs> she done 30 years. Oh, what? In prison. Oh wow! wow. That's okay. it. There we go. Three. Here we go. Three. Puzzle. That's it. Puzzle. Hands on a graffiti piece. Yeah. Hey. Go, I'm not very good at this. It's all right. That's supposed to say jewels. Yeah. Billy's the name. Graffiti paint is the game. building behind me this used to be the cinema it's now where you can come and do the roller disco but right opposite there is where Luke Howard used to live that this is the only blue plaque in the whole of Tottenham he was the father of meteorology meteorology meteor meteor meteorolo meteor meteorology meteorology it says there the name of clouds what an excellent title to be the name of clouds much better than father of meteorology um, <laughs> and uh, it's because he was the guy he wrote this book um, back in 1806 or something called on the modification of clouds and he actually named all these clouds remember when you were in, in, in geography and you had to learn all those names of clouds i don't know what these ones are they're either stratus nimbus cirrostratus cumulus nimbus it's all that bloke's fault anyway. This is Broadwater Farm Estate, which you probably heard about because back in the 1980s they had famous uh, riots. Up until the 1920s, I mean, this was all marshland because of the River Mosul. It was too marshy to build on. In the 1920s, they, they started building stuff around this area, but this was still just like marsh and everything. And I think, see, can you hear that? Yeah. You see down there, I reckon that is the River Mosul, don't you reckon? Because it, it sounds like a running river, and you can see it. And, and also the shape of the of the grid there. That's exactly what it looks like. The one that covers up the River Fleet. So when when I I've got a theory that those covers, they always use those ones for the one that covers the oh. the, the river. I don't know if that's true, but um, but anyway, I think that's what it was. So then eventually in about the 1960s they built this estate. It was like based on Corbusier, who was a Swiss French urban planner architect who specialised in providing better living conditions for people living in crowded cities. Anyway, when they first did all this, there were lots of these little pockets and alleyways which were quite conducive to crime. So um, a lot of the residents, they weren't too happy about living here. I mean, it's most famous, I suppose, for the Broadwater Farm riots, which you probably heard about. That's the one where PC Keith Blakelock got murdered back in the 1980s. Police raided the home of somebody that they were trying to arrest, but he wasn't there. But that bloke's mother, who was called Cynthia Jarrett, died of heart attack. And then this massive riot kicked off. I think it started out on the high road, but it kind of culminated here. So after that, they decided to do some regeneration of it. And they got rid of all these dangerous walkways and sort of secret hidden corners, which uh, people didn't like. Then it's, it's all fine these days. What is it? Is this a, like a food bank? Yeah. 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 to grab some food yeah. uh, every yeah. Saturday morning. We get a delivery charge. Every morning, them. every Saturday morning. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. The pandemic, we just want to see yeah. it back. Oh, that's really nice.
but it's very spacious living. That's, that's the thing. I mean, I, I can imagine the interiors are quite spacious. And yeah. And very complimentary to usual habitat life, which is more you can say for a lot of London flats these days. You can get a Jamaican patty yeah. down there. Oh, excellent. One yeah. beef patty, please. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I'm living in Bruce Grove now. Oh, right. Bruce Grove. I, I really love it. I really love well, it. Well, you love it down there. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, so it's yeah, like there's so like many it, different yeah. food. I'll tell you what, the food is much cheaper around here. Do you think so? Oh, oh yeah, you but then Camden. If I wanted to buy a sandwich or one oh, of those you live Turkish in things. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's expensive. That's like tourist fix. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's expensive, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. No, that's right. Thanks a lot. See Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. This is Bruce Castle, named after the Bruce family, as in Robert the Bruce, you know, from Scotland, as in Braveheart and all that, because it's built on land which was owned by the Bruce family. It's like a 16th century house. I think this is where the Lords of the Manor used to live. Now, back in the 1600s, there was a fella called Lord Coleraine. He was still in love with his ex and his wife, um, Constantia got very upset about this. So she threw herself from one of the upper windows there to her death, clutching her baby to her breast. And they say that her ghost haunts these grounds around here. And later on in the 19th century, Sir Rowland Hill uh, was the headmaster of a progressive school for boys here. And he was the man who, I think there's a statue of him down near St. Paul's. I think he invented the postage stamp. Actually, inside there, they've got all the archives and pictures and the history. It's a lovely place to visit, um, to go inside. They always have exhibitions and stuff. Fancy a quick cuppa? <laughs> Imagine that was your front door. Superb. <laughs> And in the grounds here, Bruce Castle Park, they've got this 450-year-old oak tree. I think a spirit lives inside. I'm obsessed with spirits living inside trees. I mean, this would have been here when King Henry VIII came to visit his sister Margaret back in uh, 1516. I mean, it probably would have just been a little kind of sapling. I reckon that looks like yeah. the spirit of the tree. Yeah. This tree was entered into the Tree of the Year competition by the Woodland Trust. They say it's one of the largest in Great Britain. There we go. Now you hold it there, hold it there. Uh, hold, uh, hold, hold, hold that to there. Uh, yeah, wait. Just over 23 feet. So how much, what does that say then? Oh, that's uh, seven metres. Seven metres. Oh, the tree's circumference is the same height as you. I'm not, I'm not seven <laughs> metres tall. Yes, you are. Seven metres tall. <laughs> seven <metres> tall. <laughs> this is the All Hallows Church. I think this is the oldest building in Tottenham. Certainly the oldest church. The land was donated by King David I of Scotland. There he is, there. And that must be his wife, Margaret but the actual building, this one, I think this is more like 14th century, right. maybe 15th century. Um, you, you've not been before, have you? No. Have you been in before? No. In the tower there are a peal of eight bells, but there is a ninth bell, which is separate from the peal of eight and is, not, is only rung very, very occasionally. And what is interesting about it is that if in 1759 it had been rung, Canada would not be British it would have been French. What? It, was, it was the garrison bell of Quebec in 1759, but they didn't ring it because they didn't know the British were climbing up the uh, side of the hills. So it wasn't rung in time and it was looted. That's the Quebec bell. And was presented to the church in about, in about 1805, and it hangs in our church tower. So how old is this tower? Uh, well, it was built around 1300. The ringing chamber. Oh, that's, so that's spectacular. They, they pull the No bottles. ringing. No, no, well, okay. unless you know how to do it. Do I go up this other ladder? Oh. There it is. Oh, I can see it. Look at it. Well, I tell you what, if they want it back, they've got a bit of a job. The Diocese of London Arms in the corner. Where does that go then? How do you on the flagpole. Oh, you There's can... another ladder oh, up you guys, there. Oh, there you put it on the flagpole. Oh, this yes. poor man. And you'd then go up that final ladder as well. 
to the top, and then you have to try and open the roof. What are you nutter? <laughs> <laughs> He's yes. a nutter! Yes. You went all the way out there! I quite agree. That window there is thought to be French and early 16th century. All the rest of the glass in the church is by Alexander Gibbs. The British Museum regarded it as the, be the finest collection of Gibbs glass in the country. Just oh, uh, uh, nothing at the moment will happen <coughs> until you pull out some stops. Is that where the expression pulling out all the stops comes it from? It might do, I, I don't know. Sounds. He's excellent. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. <laughs> song I wrote for Seven Sisters. Okay. I'm betting on Seven Sisters Seven is lucky for me If you were a parishioner from around these parts, then it cost two shillings to be buried. But if you were a foreigner, you had to pay double to be buried here. The clerk hath for every burial in the churchyard, being a parishioner, man, woman, or child, having the knell rung with the first bell for the pit, four shillings, and for the knell, eight shillings. For the second bell, 12 shillings. So depending on the amount of times you want your death knell rang, you have to pay an extra few shillings. This little stream here, this is the River Mosul. It was a major tributary of the, the Lee River. And it runs all the way through Tottenham, actually. Most of it is now covered up. This is a good place to pay poo sticks. One, two, three, down they go. Oh, they're going quite quickly, actually. Oh, no, there's one there. Yeah, no, no, one has definitely come out. It's definitely, definitely not mine. Oh, yeah, there's a, uh, my one was the big one. Someone okay, I couldn't capture one. that. I couldn't see it. How do you know that's mine or yours or, I mean, come on. I was just about to say, God, poo sticks is a bit of a rubbish game, actually. But then all of a sudden, when we saw them, we got quite competitive. <laughs> This is an alleyway here. You see there, there's a friend's meeting house. You see that? Yes. Um, friend's meeting house here, like they were Quakers. But this is where the Tottenham cake was invented. Tottenham cake, this is quite famous. This actually won on Bake Off. So I had to go to Greg's in Camden to buy Tottenham cake. So I couldn't buy Tottenham cake in Tottenham. Simon sat on our Tottenham cake. Oh, look at that. There's sponge on the bottom. Look, there's sponge on the bottom and it's got this kind of um, pink, pink icing, icing on, the, on the top. There, you see, and the pink icing, originally, it was formed from this mulberry tree in the back of the Quakes house. So this, this fella called Henry Chalkley, who was a, a baker, a Quaker baker, a Quaker baker. He was a Quaker baker here, yeah, Henry Chalkley. He created this cake. Um, what's it like? After it's Simon's... It's a bit squashed. And Simon left that on it. Um, and he would sell these cakes for a penny. One penny a cube. When Tottenham Hotspur won the FA Cup in 1901, because it's lucky for Spurs when the year ends in a one, as you all know. And they were the first non-league, I think they were the only non-league club ever to have won the FA Cup. Anyway, he handed out these cubes of, um, of uh, Tottenham cake to all the little boys and girls around the area for free to celebrate Tottenham Hotspur's win in the FA Cup. Anyway, this is not to be confused with Tottenham pudding, which was created uh, during the Second World War, because um, it was actually named Tottenham pudding by Queen Mary when she came to Tottenham to visit. Um, there was a, this area was really heavily targeted during the Second World War and in, in order to, they had uh, all this old food and stuff, they decided to put it all together and use it as um, food for pigs and animals and stuff. Um, and that was called Tottenham Pudding, but that's not the Tottenham Cake. This is a lovely looking restaurant, Blue Coats. This used to be a school, Blue Coats School. But you can see everything's Tottenham related around here, as in Tottenham Hots. But look, Ordere est facere, that's actually the uh, slogan of um, Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. It means to dare is to do. Let's sing and dance in the rain. 
even Harry Kane is a Jules Guides fan. Look. <laughs> Come on. Jules, he's gone to Wembley. His knees have gone all trembly. La, 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 la. Oh, la, 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 la. That's, oh. that's so weak. That's the best. That is yeah, so behind me is the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, down near Tottenham Marshes, there was this cricket club, and then this fella called Bobby Buckeye, I think they got tired of playing cricket in the winter times. Back in 1882, this Bobby Buckle decided to form Tottenham Hotspur Football Club and became its first captain, and he became the first person ever to score for Spurs. And it's called Tottenham Hotspur after Harry Hotspur, or Sir Henry Percy. Anyway, Harry Hotspur's descendants owned Tottenham Marshes, where Spurs used to play their games. So if you look at the cockerel, which is the emblem of Tottenham Hotspur, you'll see that the cockerel is actually wearing spurs. In cockfights, they would add these little spurs to the ankles of the cock, so that it would be even more violent when they fought each other. Now, one of the most important players who played for Spurs was Walter Tarl. Back in 1909, he was the first black player to suffer racial abuse in a, a football match. I think it was a, a match against Bristol Rovers. It was quite sad because he was really good, but because of this abuse he received, they, they didn't want to put him in the team after that. And he only played about nine or ten matches for Spurs in the end. And he ended up going to fight in the First World War. He fought at the Battle of the Somme, and he was the first black officer to lead white British soldiers into battle, even though it was actually banned. Unless you were a pure white European, you were banned from becoming a commissioned officer in the, in the army. But, uh, but he was, they made an exception in his case. He died in the Battle of Bapaume, which is somewhere in France, I believe. And Tom Billingham, who was the Leicester City goalkeeper, took heavy fire. He ran out there to try and uh, retrieve his body so he could bring him back and be buried in, in England, but he didn't manage. So Walter Tull is somewhere over there in France, buried. But uh, yeah, I mean, they've been a bit unfortunate because it cost about a billion pounds to build this stadium. They were hoping to get the money back from gate receipts, but then uh, COVID hit, so they haven't been able to get anyone in there. So troubles are brewing. I think it's important to mention some famous Spurs supporters. You know Adele? Yeah. She's a Spurs supporter Adele? and she was born in Tottenham, but my favourite. Chas and Dave. Oh, Chas and Dave. Chas and Dave. Chas, Chas and Dave. Chas and Dave are brilliant. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, they're lifelong Spurs supporters. Yeah. It's really quite a nice pub. I love the garden. They've got a massive garden here. Great for watching sport. And look, you've got all your Spurs memorabilia here. Uh, apparently, you're not, you're not allowed in here if you're not a Spurs fan. Well, I think on match days, that is. Today, I just met a couple of gooners at the bar. So, uh, um, cheers, Louisa. Cheers, Simon. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, follow me on my Instagram, which is at Jules Guides Official. And uh, if you like the song, it's by Little Lost Lou. So you can follow her on her littlelostlou.com. And uh, if you want to get in touch, just check it. Go over to my website, julesguides.com. Cheers, see you next time.